Hey knitters, happy Monday. It's Louise from Wildflower Will and welcome to my new start Monday video. She'll find me here every Monday showing you the new knitting project I'm casting on for this upcoming week. This week I've got two projects to show you. The first one I'm going to show you, I decided to keep it in this really cute little winter themed bag. Since it has snowed here, winter's decided to actually show up here in Ontario. Not bad for mid-January. And what I've cast on, I actually started this yesterday. So I started before Monday, but I'm not gonna worry about that. <laughs> All cast ons are fair game. I pulled out some Patton's Croy. You guys probably know that I counted my Patton's Croy and I had well over 300, close to 400 balls of Patton sock yarn. My last couple of weeks, none of my new starts. Oh, actually last week did have a Croy new start, but the ones before that did not have Croy. And a couple of people asked me, they're like, you haven't started anything with Croy. But I had this yarn set aside since probably before Christmas for a European road trip shawl. A couple of friends and I got together um, yesterday, Sunday afternoon for a bit of a knitting afternoon. And we all cast this on all with different yarn but I figured I have enough Croy and I need to start working with it. So this is what I, I picked. Now, let's see, I'm not even sure what the colorway is. So this is Patton's, it's not actually Croy, but I did count the um, stretch sock yarn in with my, my Croy count. This is um, a blend of cotton and wool, which I think sadly is discontinued. I don't think they make it any longer. Um, licorice, I like that name. So it's kind of, it's a black and cream, maybe a little bit of gray in there. And this cotton, it's a, it's a stretchy, it is really stretchy. Can you see that nylon um, in it or how it spun? Whatever it is, it feels really soft because of the cotton. It's got that stretch in it. I think it's gonna make a great shawl. European road trip shawl, the yardage it calls for, I think it was 1400 meters. Um, so I pulled out five or six balls of this. And I cast on, I used a 3.75 millimeter needle. The pattern called for a size four, but because I'm a loose knitter, I always go down a needle size. So, and I'm liking the fabric that this is making. And see, it's still had, it's got lots of stretch. And the side's got that nice little curl on it because it's just, um, it's just stockinette stitch and there's no border on it. So this edge, just curls in really nice, it's cute. So I'm just still working on the increase section for a few more, I can't remember how, what my last um, stitch count is. I'm, I'm probably about at the halfway mark. I think it's supposed to measure, yeah, over 20 inches. So, and I think I'm, I'm well over that at the halfway mark. So anyways, that's what I'm working on. I've just put a little dent can feel the center of this ball is disappeared. It's starting to feel a little empty in there. So this is just going to be my Netflix binge watching project. Just knit back and forth, back and forth. Whenever I need something that uses no brain power, this is what I'm going to pull out. And it doesn't have a deadline. Um, whenever it's done, it's done. I'm not going to, uh, stress about this because it's because it does take it's got a lot of yardage so it's going to take a fair amount of time to knit but it's started i've got a good start on it i'm happy with how the fabric's knitting up with my what my gauge is like so i'm happy i'm just going to have fun knitting it so project number two is of course a dishcloth because like i mentioned in previous videos i am going to try to do a dishcloth a week work my way through my cotton stash and I'll be posting pictures and tagging Amber from the Yarn Hoarder because she's doing another um, Yarn Hoarder Dishcloth Challenge 2020 over on Instagram. So I'll be posting pictures over there. And I found a nice yellow. And this is not Dishy This Week. This is I Love This Cotton from Hobby Lobby. And you'll probably remember, if you, if you watch some of our um, past Fiber Friends podcasts, you'll know that I took a trip to Hobby Lobby in the summertime because we don't have Hobby Lobby here in Canada. So when uh, 
I was in the States visiting some knitting friends in August. Um, I saw this, they have huge selection, but you know what? I don't think I bought any cotton there. I bought tons of other yarn. We bought tons of yarn. I'm sure our pictures are on the wall somewhere as like very important customer. <laughs> um, not important, but people, these are like yarn shoppers who spend a lot of money. I think, I think we're under that category. <laughs> Anyways, we had a fantastic time at Hobby Lobby, but come to think of, yeah, I didn't buy this there. I think this was gifted to me by another knitting friend. So anyways, it is pulled out because I thought yellow, you know, middle of winter, we need some sunshine. So we're using this and it is buttercup is the colorway. Now I'm striping this. It's not going to be solid yellow because I will show you. I do have a finish this week and it was the dishcloth that I started last week trying to, like I said, keep up with that one a week. This is Nitpicks Dishy, colorway is Ash, and this is my third dish cloth that I have worked using this Ash colorway. Obviously this one I held double, this was um, a brunette and Dishy held together, but this ball of Dishy is going on and on and on. Just when I am trying to work my way through my stash quickly, this ball will not come to an end. <laughs> I still have these two little bits. So I wound most of the skein, you know how the center most of it was gone. It was kind of getting kind of unruly. So I thought I'll just wind it up into a ball. I got three quarters of it wound and I found a little knot. So I cut the knot out and then just wound up this other little ball. So what I'm gonna do to use up this last bit, I'm gonna do yellow and gray. I'm gonna do the same pattern as I did here. Let me show you the right side. So this is the granite stitch. It's four, it's just a four row repeat that gives you this texture. It is a, you knit a row, you purl a row, you knit two together all the way across the row then you do a knit front and back all the way across the row. So that gives you a purl row to give you a little bit of texture and doing the decrease and increase, it almost gives you like a, a little lacy kind of look in there. Kind of like you have some um, eyelets. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just, I'm gonna do a four row repeat. I'm just gonna kind of stripe it. So if you look on the yellow, you can tell, see how open, it almost looks like a, a lace design. That's where I've knit two together and then you can, I've come back and it looks like I've got pairs of stitches sitting on the needle. That's where in that one single stitch that I worked two together to give me a single stitch. And then on the next row in that single stitch, I've worked a front, knit front and back. And that's where I've kind of come up with these pairs of stitches. So this is, that's, I've, that's one pattern repeat done. Now I'm going to do a pattern repeat in the gray. Four rows of gray, four rows of yellow, four rows of gray, alternating. And hopefully I will finish up this little bit. We'll see. Anyways, Knit Picks, you get two thumbs up for <laughs> making a ball of yarn that has got tons of yardage and you definitely are, we are getting our, our money out of knitting this ball. So the other difference I did with this dishcloth is I decided to put a border on it. You can see I've got a garter stitch border on the bottom. I did five rows of just plain knitting and you can't really see it starting to come quite yet, but I've got four stitches on here that are, it's going to be a garter stitch edging up both sides just to give it a little bit of a border and then of course across the top I'll do another five rows of garter stitch and then cast off now this isn't too bad but there's there's no edge stitches on here at all so it does curl in a little bit the top and bottom aren't bad they there we go I can't <laughs> when I'm holding this up I can't see it um, it curls a smidge, but not really too bad. And it's not, I mean, the, I mean, for a dishcloth, it's fine, right? 
um, even though it curls, but the edges just aren't real super neat and tidy. They're a little bumpy. So I thought for this one, I will just put some garter stitch all the way around it on all four sides, just to kind of tidy up those edges. So I think I cast on 38 stitches. You want an even number of stitches for your granite stitch in the center, and then I've just got four stitches on either side. So that's what I'm going to work on. I'll have this one done by next Sunday, and we'll be ready to cast on another one. And we'll see if those two little balls of gray, if I end up using them all up. I hope so, or else I'll be starting another one with a couple of rows of gray is like my mission to get this one ball of dishy finished, let me tell you. Um, because I am working through my stash. As you guys know, I have a well-rounded stash that I have been collecting for many, many years. And this is the year that I am knitting through it. This is, I've learned, I've learned in the past never to say, oh, I'm not going to buy any yarn this year. We could look at A because I know I could never go a whole year without buying yarn. I think I tried it once and I think the month of January a few years ago, I tried not buying yarn and my goodness, it was torture. <laughs> I didn't realize how often, I guess I really bought, bought yarn, but anyways, it was, but you know, it's like anything when you tell yourself you can't do it, all you want to do is do that one thing. So I've decided I'm not going to do that, but this year I'm just going to be very more conscious about what I buy and just buy when I go on trips, um, yarn festivals, you know, something special, just not every week running to the yarn shop and picking up something. I am going to, I'm going to shop my stash. That's what I'm doing. So I am really focusing on that. So there'll be a few new purchases in here, but a lot of it, I really want to knit what I already have. And um, so, so far, this has all been stash. So three weeks into the new year, and I'm still feeling like I'm on track, working through my stash, getting new things started. And I know some people are always saying, well, Louise, you're starting all these new projects. Um, last year when I did this, I was starting one project a week. So far this, this year, I've been starting two or three things. And I know people are always saying, but you have to finish some things. So what I'm going to do is the last Friday of the month, I'm going to pop in here, show a, um, just film a quick little video showing you what I have finished. And hopefully there'll be one or two things. Well, there'll be my dishcloths for sure. So I'll give you a recap of my four dishcloths and hopefully there'll be a couple of other projects stuck in there too. So the one thing, other thing I wanted to know, and I want a little feedback from all of you guys out there is I've heard people talking about keeping track of how many meters or yards or miles they have knit. How do people do that? Um, I posted the question on my Wildflower Will Facebook group yesterday and a couple people had said they use Ravelry. Somehow you can connect your stash on, or put your stash on Ravelry and then as you're doing your projects, it somehow connects and keeps track of the, the yardage. So I'm gonna investigate that. And then I also found a website called knitmeter.com. And you go on there, you make a free account, and you somehow, you, you put in your yardage in it. You have a little badge that you can, I saw some people have them on their Ravelry page. You can put it on your website, um, your blog, I guess wherever you wanna put it. Um, so I'm going to look into that too. Has anybody used it? Does anybody have any tips on how they keep track? Oh, I know. I think, um, somebody said they just actually just write it in a journal and just keep track of every time they finished a ball, they'll write down how many meters it was and just keep a running tally that way. So I am open for ideas because I'm hoping that if I can keep track of the meters and see it stack up, I don't know. I'm looking for all these tips just to keep me motivated because it is only week three out of 52 weeks this year and I don't want to lose this momentum. So if you guys have any ideas at all on how I can keep this going and how I can keep track of it um, accurately, I guess. Mo some, I mean, somewhat accurately, right? Um, and I think I will 
I think I'll be pleased at the end of the year to see how much I can actually knit when I put my mind to it. So I think that is all I have to show you. So I am just going to go get busy working on, I still have some projects I cast on from last week. So I'm still working away on those and I am going to have a couple of finishes to show you at the end of the month. And I'm going to keep working on my European road trip shawl, my dishcloth, and I'm just going to have fun this week. <laughs>